Hi, I'm David Cantor with the Law Offices of David Michael Cantor and welcome to my blog. Today's topic has to do with child pornography. Now I know most people think, wow, that's something I would never have to worry about. But believe it or not, everybody who has a computer and who shares files does have to worry about this stuff. We have computer forensic experts that are the best if you should happen to fall in the web of FrostWire and LimeWire. In order to be a computer forensics expert, a person has to be certified in NCASE and FTK, pass a written exam, and also take a practical exam which consists of 60 days to complete. It's quite extensive. Now when the government is looking to charge people, they will go into your computer and only look for chargeable images. They will never look for exculpatory evidence and they don't care who was actually at the keyboard. They just assume it was you. and That's not always the case. Basically, your computer contains thousands of cached images on your hard drive uh, which you got from web browsing in the temporary internet files. What well, that means, you're online, you're browsing, anything you look at actually gets cached. And you're probably totally unaware that that's on your computer. Now, the media player cache, that happens when you um, open a Windows media player and it's created automatically, that being the media player cache. This exists without your knowledge to most people and it's not actually downloaded by you. It occurs automatically. Incomplete folders. An incomplete folder in your computer contains files that either did not complete loading or that the user canceled during the download. Now this happens all the time. This is where you're downloading something that takes too long and you say forget it, cancel. Whatever was downloaded goes into your incomplete folder without your knowledge. So this means you could be downloading something you've never even looked at, such as kiddie porn, and it ends up in your computer. Um, these incomplete folders can be shared without your knowledge, and you can be completely unaware of the content. Now why is it important that it's shared? Well that's where the second charge of distribution of child pornography comes in. The government looks to charge you with possession and distribution. By the way, in Arizona, each count of possession carries a mandatory minimum 10 years in prison for each image. Each image is stacked on the other one by law. So if you have five images, that's 50 years in prison minimum. The maximum is 23 times 5, 115 years in prison. Federal government, they usually offer you five years, but if you're convicted, it's 17 to 20 years on a single count of possession and distribution combined. So pretty bad stuff. Um, the government uses a special codex to view files that the average user doesn't have. So even though you may have some of this in your incomplete file and you can't even view it, the government can see it. Now in regards to LimeWire, LimeWire was shut down about a year ago and they immediately restarted as FrostWire. Now this is a file sharing program that a lot of you are probably familiar with where you can share music, photos, videos, etc. Now when you open an account, it automatically creates a saved folder, a shared folder, and an incomplete folder. Everything you have defaults automatically to shared and saved. It does this as part of the contract you sign with FrostWire or LimeWire to share your music and your videos. Now once a user enables LimeWire or FrostWire to send music files directly to your iTunes library, it automatically creates an incomplete folder and it places files in there without your knowledge. So what happens is, for most people, if you have an incomplete file, a user never wants to move or access incomplete files. In fact, you don't even think about them. Yet child porn can automatically default into that file without your knowledge. So if you're automatically downloading somebody's music that you like, you see somebody and they have 10 songs that you really like and you realize, hey, this guy likes the music I like, I will just browse all, control A, and I'm going to do a mass download. No problem. Well, there is a problem. The problem is of the 2,000 songs or videos you're downloading into your iTunes account, you don't realize you're not looking at the titles of some of these. And they may have titles in there that say child pornography or something less obvious um, that is indicative of child porn but only to the government or people who are purveyors of child porn. So you don't see this, it downloads into your iTunes account and now you have a video that contains child pornography. The other problem is mislabeled files or malware. So if you download something that says cute kittens and you don't preview it, you just download it. Well you don't know if it's really cute kittens, it could have child pornography. Now in order to preview something, 
you cannot preview what you've downloaded until it completes downloading. Then you can, can take 10 minutes. You can then start looking at it in two, min, two seconds and you can go, oh, I don't want this. Delete, right? You're fine. Wrong. You're not fine. It's in the uh, incomplete file even though you tried to de delete it and that folder still exists. You may have watched the first two or three seconds and there is no child pornography and then you, you really don't know what's on there and you delete it, but it's still there and that's the problem. How does the government know it's there? They look what's called hash values. Hash values are basically the number of pixels and there's a certain hash value for every video or picture that's out there. So there's known child pornography that contains, I don't know, a hash value of 22,572. And the FBI knows that that hash value is child porn. So when you go down and you click on cute kittens without realizing, realizing it's child porn, and you say, yeah, I want to download that, and you click onto it, it immediately alerts the government, boom, there's that hash value. Now two seconds later you may say, oh, I've got to run, the phone's ringing. You stop the download, you cancel it. And so you never even completed the download, you never even previewed it, but the government's been told you downloaded kitty porn because the hash value matches. That's enough for the government to get a search warrant, then they go into your house, and then once they're in your computer, unbeknownst to you, you've done a mass download and you have actual child pornography in that computer. That's a huge problem. If you or a loved one are ever charged with child pornography, or if the government has executed a warrant taking your computer away and they haven't quite charged you yet but you're in what's known as the pre-charge phase, you need to get a lawyer who knows what they're doing. Some other resources, uh, you also need an expert who knows what they're doing. We've found that one of the best experts in the United States actually lives in Arizona. She lives in Tucson. It's Tammy Lears, L-O-E-H-R-S, and she can be found at ForensicExpert.net. She is excellent. We used her in a trial in Tucson um, and she was fantastic. Also, uh, you might want a trial consultant. And we found that the best one in the nation is Kim Hart, H-A-R-T. Now Kim Hart uh, started the National Child Abuse Defense Resource Center. And she can be found at falseallegation.org. That's the National Child Abuse Defense Resource Center. As a trial consultant, she can be found at kimhart.com, and she is also excellent. Um, if you or a loved one are charged or a warrant's been executed, you need to get a lawyer who knows what they're doing, and you should consult, at the very least, Kim Hart or Tammy Lears. Um, if you have any other questions, we welcome you to contact us at dmcantor.com, and uh, we'd love to talk to you about this. My feel is I was ecstatic when they shut down LimeWire. I wish they'd shut down FrostWire. Uh, but that's what I think. Tell me what you think.